I'm curious uh, to what extent each of you thinks the country's business education and MBA programs <laughs> oh, yeah. are really positioned to move this agenda forward, or are they real, really still fighting the last war, if you will, and, and not really well positioned to put people and leaders in charge who uh, understand sustainability and understand this challenge of innovation? Well, as one at an institution taking a lot of the pot shots, I would say, um, I would say the finance field and the economists don't yet get it, but lots of others do. And as I've been out on this book tour, I've been at a lot of business schools that are putting the creation of social value at the center of their curriculum. And we're trying to do a lot at Harvard Business School, too. So I agree there needs to be change. Every institution of the society needs to change. We need to add the, a social logic to the financial logic with which people talk about how they're doing what they do. That's a matter of values. Um, and I think there's, there's some progress. I think there's a long way to go. But there's, again, a movement of people who are trying to do that. And I would say that the students themselves, the young people, are so excited about starting ventures or joining companies that have these philosophies that you'll get the best and the brightest. Um, and if companies start recruiting for those values and not just for financial analytics skills, that also will make a big difference. John, I know this is something you've thought a lot about. In fact, you've written basically an entire book on the subject called Innovation Nation, which I highly recommend if you're interested in the, in the question of how, you know, what's required. So you want to give a couple comments? Well, I think that um, MBA students are kind of raw, optimistic talent. You know, I had the pleasure of uh, teaching at a well-known business school, uh, Eastern Business School for a while as well. And, and uh, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the student uh, population. I think the issue is really the uh, structure of incentives that they, they walk into and the fact that, you know, in the good old days or the bad old days, depending on how you define them, you know, if you're 26, 28 and you graduate and you can make a huge whopping high six-figure salary uh, because Wall Street is in a robust uh, and vibrant state, um, you know, that's going to influence your choices. So I think the whole notion of, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, the, the, the social capital as opposed to the financial capital, the changing array of opportunities, the, uh, the attention that is now being paid to seeking employment with companies that stand for something, that mean something, that embody a sense of purpose, you know, ought to uh, show, and in fact, I believe the statistics already show encouraging trends in terms of where you know, the MBA population is kind of uh, uh, placing uh, its bets. Um, I, I think overall, you know, we're in this kind of stovepipe world, world still, you know, however, where, you know, you have uh, designers over here and technologists over here and um, MBAs, you know, over in the third ring of the circus. One of the most interesting projects that I've had the pleasure of being involved with recently is advising something called the Alto University, which was named after Alvar Alto, the famous famous Finnish designer. And this is a merger of the Helsinki School of Economics, which is the business school, uh, the Technical University, TKK, and then the School of Arts and Design into a new super university that they're calling, nicknamed, the Innovation University. So I think that this notion of, you know, it's not so much that the system is broken, but that we're in an evolutionary stage where the same kind of horizontal integration that we crave in terms of large-scale innovation needs to be embodied in some of our fundamental uh, educational institutions. And the good news is that a lot of that is, is beginning to happen. You know, they're green shoots. So, you know, I can just add, and it's less about the MBAs, because I actually don't teach at the... <laughs> <laughs> um, but they wear your shoes. But they wear my shoes, yeah. yeah. Um, I actually think we need to reframe the narrative here. And I think the, the, that we've really get it, get, got to get us to a collective place where we start talking about this as the race to the next wave of economic competitiveness. And if you think about what happened with the internet revolution, and you think about how that fueled growth and jobs and entrepreneurship, we need to take that and apply that language and that sense of possibility to the conversation today. And at which stage, I think you stop getting classes with people who are being taught about sustainability as kind of still in the risk and the morality stage of things. And you actually start to see the birth of an entrepreneurship movement that goes, I can do both. I can have my cake. I can eat it. I can uh, think about social and environmental good. And I can make this into a growth business. 
Because right now, w this is we're in the race. You know, if you look at what's happening in China, if you look at what's happening uh, in some parts of Europe, the race has already begun. Just we here in America, and I speak as someone that lives in Oregon, um, we haven't even realized that we've entered the race. So I think if we can reframe collectively the narrative as being one of innovation for what purpose? Innovation for the purpose of economic competitiveness because we are redesigning the business model and we are redesigning the way the world works, then I think we start to get to a place where we're going to be overwhelmed by the innovation. So, so I, for one, am actually surprisingly optimistic about how fast I think this thing can go. Great. And on that optimistic note, <laughs> um, I'm very sorry to be closing it. It's been a fantastic discussion. Please take it with you to the reception and, um, and welcome and join me in thanking them. Help, I need somebody. Help, not just anybody. Help, you know I need someone. Help, when I was young, was so